What's up sellers and welcome to another video. Uh, in today's YouTube video, we are un unboxing, unboxing a box. So let's jump into the box. So a couple days ago, I went to the Goodwill outlet and I filmed a video, you can see the card right above here, uh, where I sourced through the Goodwill outlet or the bins and in an effort to find things to flip onto eBay. Well, I can't record in there with my, uh, with my camera set up because I have the camera and the tripod and the mic on top. It's very conspicuous and I've been told I'm, I'm not allowed to film with the, uh, I'm not allowed to film in there. So I thought I needed something more incognito. I needed something a little bit more uh, inconspicuous. And so I had the idea to go and purchase a GoPro. However, I don't want to spend several hundred dollars on a GoPro when I'm not even sure if this is sort of the thing that I want to do when it comes to sourcing at thrift stores. So enter what I'm going to call the faux pro, uh, basically a knockoff of a GoPro. It was on the deal of the day for Amazon a couple days ago. And so I snatched one. This is an unboxing and a review. And then we're going to put it to the test today at the Goodwill outlet the bins. So let's jump in and open up this box. All right. So I have the box here. I'm um, actually blotted out my address. So that is not seen. Let's jump in and check out what we've got here. All right. Within the box, we've got, of course, air bubbles. Here we are. This is the Picture. They call it a 4K ultra high def. I'm not sure how accurate that is going to be. Um, let's put this thing open. Check out. It's the Victure AC600. There we go. So it's got this little card here. Looks like there's their contact information and social. A little thank you card. That's cool. We have the user manual. That's probably helpful. We have a box stuff, and we have the we have the unit here. Uh, it's in a waterproof case. I did a little bit of research on YouTube and uh, checking reviews on Amazon before I bought this, just to see. And yeah, let's open this up and check it out. Everything's covered in this this plastic film, so we'll get. Take that stuff off later. All right, so we have a power button, also mode button, so a multifunction button. Looks like some sort of some sort of light right here. We've got an OK button. We've got an up and down, and we have a speaker. So they say it does record audio, but I'm not sure how well that's going to come through. And then the battery slot right there. So let's go through this box and see what's in here. I'm just going to set all this stuff aside. We've got this box of accessories. This is one thing that kind of made the deal almost too good to be true as it came with so many accessories. It was, it was kind of overkill. Uh, right off the bat, two batteries right on top. So we'll set one aside for that. We have a replacement back. It looks like this has holes in it. Don't know why it would have holes. Anyways, replacement back. Maybe someone can tell me about that. Oh, maybe it's for a strap, right? Maybe put a strap through there. I don't know. Speaking of straps, here we go. We have some straps. Don't know exactly what you have in there. This is just a ton of stuff, like so much stuff. You got some clips. You've got screen wipe, adhesive sticks, sticky things, um, zip ties. You've got a mount. You've got another mount. It's like an like a cell phone holder kind of thing, but for the camera. You got another mount. You've got a bicycle or a bar mount. You've got a clip. See, this is something that I feel like would be super helpful for me because I don't know how this works, but I would want to clip this onto my backpack or something while I'm walking around and sourcing. So that seems like something that would be beneficial to me. Uh, we have this clip here and another little mount thing and another mount and you've got a charging cable. 
So a lot of good stuff here. Uh, I'm going to kind of check this out, put it together, and then we will try it out at the Goodwill bins. All right, so I think this is going to be my setup here. Basically what I've done is um, put my backpack on. It has the cross chest strap. I feel so goofy doing this. And then clipped the, the faux pro. That's what we're calling it. It's got this little clip on it. Clip the faux pro right there. And I, I think that'll work. Maybe I'll reverse it and clip it down so that way it doesn't fall off. Yeah, anyways, that's the idea. We'll see how it works. Um, one thing to note is this setup did not come with a memory card and there's no onboard storage for this. So you have to have a, what is this thing? A micro SD card for it to work. I have a 16 gig just because uh, I had a photography business and so we have memory cards all over the place. Uh, micro SD card, 16 gig, it should do the job. The uh, batteries, they claim that at 1080p, 60 frames per second, which is what I will be filming in, is 90 minutes of recording time and 4K, if it's really 4K, uh, 4K footage at 25 frames per second, which we'll experiment with, uh, is 60 minutes of recording time. Not sure how accurate those numbers are, but that's what the manufacturer claims. We will see. However, let's go. We'll check it out. Uh, I'm going to hit the gym. Not going to film footage of that. We'll just jump straight to the Goodwill outlet. All right, so we're here at the Goodwill outlet. It is a foggy day. It's drizzly. It's such weird weather. Anyways, um, I am waiting on a friend to get here. I have a friend who is a welder and uh, by trade, he's off of work for a few days. And so he thought uh, he would like to come out here. So I invited him to come out to the Goodwill outlet with me and to do some sourcing since he has a few days off. So he should be showing up pretty soon. I'm going to get in there and start uh, start looking around, seeing what I can find. I've got the little camera prepped and ready. It's got a, got the clip on it. Got the It's got it all. Okay. Um, I didn't realize that I hadn't set up the settings. Um, so I had to spend time doing that. I did it. It's very easy. Um, I'll go over that later. The one thing that I was super concerned about is that on the side, by those two, there's an HDM, a mini HDMI and a mini USB plug-in. Right behind that is where the um, mini SD card goes. Micro SD, mini SD, whatever. That's where the memory card goes. And I was concerned because there's no little door or anything to cover it. And I thought, man, you know, a slight pressure or grabbing this thing wrong could make that thing fall out. But when it's in this case, it's covered, which is excellent. And then when it's in the waterproof case, obviously it's covered. It's in the case. So uh, I don't think you would ever need to take it. Like you would never just hold the camera outside of a case or anything like that. So I think that this is a fairly good design. On this side, you have uh, an up and down button. Those are accessible from within this case. And then you have the OK button on top. It seems like they did a pretty fair job at, at covering everything with this. So, um, so far, seems pretty good. I am able to record in 1080p at 30 frames per second, which is what I'm doing um, with this. I thought it was 1080p at 60 frames per second only. However, it's not. You can do 30 frames per second. I'm doing that. I want to maximize my battery. I want to maximize my memory card. And I want to make sure that the frames per second on this is as close as possible to what I'm recording on my camera, which is 24 frames. It's my preferred method of uh, shooting. I like shooting at 24 frames per second. Let's go in there and see what we can find. Emerson Research CKS1850. People, people just pass it by. 
Sir, how are how in the world did you see those and no one else did? What in the world? You're awesome, bro. You need to come with me more often. <laughs> dang, see that right there? God, dang. that's an easy 25 bucks if it wasn't real. You think this is real, ostrich? I can't, I'm not well versed enough to be able to tell. This right here, as long as they're not like ripped, this is an easy 18 box. Yeah, I should sell my, I have tons of camis that don't fit me anymore. You really? My Marine Corps camis. Bro, yeah. this is going to cost me a dollar, not even a dollar, this is not a pound. They were selling these for seven dollars. There we go, boom. Lucky brand, there we go. Uh, but someone ruined it. I came to the bottom. Gosh darn it. Oh, yeah. Is it suede? Oh, yeah. Imitation. It's Gap. Genuine Let me uh, hold on to that. Gap. Genuine suede. Gap. Genuine suede. Jacket. Women's. Some similar comps, pre-owned, 39, 79. They took best offer, so you could probably sell it for 25, 30. Mm -hmm. You gonna do it? Jump in, bro. Maybe. Put it in the basket. Think about it. That's a good find. Anything leather. <laughs> Most people will skip on that because it says Gap on it, because that's a mall brand. But yeah, anything leather, like that's. That's exactly right. This is what I'm looking for. Vintage Bugle Boy jeans. 90s. Bro, yes! They don't make jeans like this anymore. I'm going to price check these real quick. Oh, hey. Right under my nose. The other hand. Yeah. Like 20 to 30 bucks. Used. It's a win. So I'm gonna pay a dollar for him. Uh, Hawaiian shirts, bro. If you see Hawaiian shirts, let me know. Island Fever. We might call this vintage. Let's see. Dude, Hawaiian shirts go so well as long as they're vintage. What is it? I'm not either. We'll check it out. Island Fever Hawaiian shirt. So only one shirt has sold for $27. I'm gonna take a take it as a risk. <laughs> See what happens. I do need to check that jacket. When are you checking eBay? Whenever you go on here, if you swipe, it'll open up your filters, and then you want to click Show More, 
and then sold items. And that way you can actually see John B. Uh, Stetson. You said Stetson? Yeah. Yeah, dude. They're all selling for $25. There's one that sold for 16 That's a good find. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Get them. Sell them, bro. Let me check them okay. just to make sure that they're not, like, destroyed. Skinny and tall, whoever it is. So you can call them distressed because they have that and they have that. That's meant to be there. Dude, a good find, bro. Excellent. Cool. We're, we should actually separate these things so we don't get... Who sells Bullhead? I think that's Pacific Sunwear. Let me see. These are denim joggers. That might be... I'll look them up. I mean, yo, I would wear these. Holy cow, dude. I might buy these from you. Bullhead denim joggers. Um, these denim joggers are, they're selling for like anywhere from 15 to $18. That's up to you. I mean, I like them. I would wear them more than anything, generally not, unless it's like a, a vintage, authentic. What is this one? Did you already check this? No. It's got cool colors. There's no brand on it. Dang it. Lucky brand. 221 original straight. Lucky brand 221 original straight. There we go, bro. 37 bucks. Really? Yeah. 37 on the high end. Oh, yeah. Wow. Are those? 6S, 6S. Air Force. 15, no? Shoot, man. Sell them. Really good condition. How, like, do they feel crisp or do they feel pretty wore out? Dude, sell them. If you're spending a dollar and you can get 18 bucks for them, you know, that ain't bad. Yeah, there you go. That's a solid sale right there. Yeah, they're getting away from them. But... Yeah. But if you can sell them within the next, I don't know, six months. Large short. Nice. It's crispy. Oh, dude. Yes. Vintage Eddie Bauer women's windbreaker. These are selling thirty to fifty dollars a piece. Really? Like a windbreaker rain jacket kind of thing. It's cool. Do this stuff. I'm gonna go down. Oh yes, bro. Brooks Brothers. Yes. Let me just check these real quick. Brooks Brothers suspenders. 16 bucks, 20 bucks. <laughs> that $20 plus shipping. Good. Yep. Really? Were, were they these ones?
so I'm gonna cut through down there and over. I'm gonna go fast. I'm gonna go fast. Yeah, I'm gonna go to the last one first. Wait till they lock it. Yeah. That little beam, bam. All the clothes go from there, right? Right, yeah. Okay. Skip on these. Can I? That's fine. I just put them right, right here. Okay. All right. Thanks very much. Thank you. you have a great day. Have a good day. Thanks. You too. All right, so let's jump in and see what we got today. Uh, the first thing here is, let's get some light in here. All right, the first thing is this Columbia Sportswear Company uh, bag. I don't know whether to call this, I, this is like that LL Bean bag. I don't know whether to call it a purse or it's not a camera bag. Maybe it's a camera bag. I don't know, but kind of like a messenger bag sort of thing. It's small. Next, I got this. I really like this. This is super nice. This is, uh, the brand is PT. Don't know what it stands for, but it's, this is a really well-made bag. PT, it's a camera bag. So when you open it, it's got a couple flaps that open and you can see slots for all your camera equipment. Probably, you know, a spot for a tablet. Um, you could use it as a purse, I guess, if that's something that you wanted to do. Uh, it's got this pocket in the front. I really, really like this thing. It's, I don't know that it's been used very much at all. It has some stuff inside. Let's see here, local botanical gardens. And then, yeah, uh, pretty cool, pretty cool bag. I'm still waiting to find some money in one of these bags someday. I got this game. This is called Art Shark, a game by Ann Nielsen. Collect great art, auction it, hide it, steal it. So this is, Brand new. All the pieces are here. They've never been punched out. I don't know about this game. Never played it. Not sure what this game entails. Not even sure what it what it sells for. Uh, I kind of bought this just in case we're able to sell it. Then we'll sell it. But if not, we will play it. My my wife and kids like board games, so maybe, maybe, maybe. Got these Brooks Brothers right here. Brooks Brothers suspenders. We have this Emerson Research clock radio alarm clock thing. 
taking a gamble on this. This is a 100% genuine suede leather jacket. It's in really good condition. No rips, tears, stains, or smells. However, it's not necessarily a particularly desirable brand. And so that is where this becomes a gamble. The brand is IE. I don't know. I've I've heard that brand and I've seen it and it's not a, you know, it's not a luxury brand. Next, Lucky Brand jeans. These are the 221 original straights right there. They are really good condition. Next, these are Bullhead Denim Company skinny joggers. They're jean joggers. We've got some Army combat uniform trousers right there. We've got United States Navy uniform, NWU uniform blouse right there. We've got this, very excited about this, Trader Bay vintage windbreaker. These are going 25 to 35 bucks. Goodwill was selling it for $9.49 originally. No one bought it, so it went to the bins. Really good. We have this, this, this. It's a windbreaker rain jacket. I'm calling this a vintage Eddie Bauer, but I'm going to do some more research on that tag right there. This right here, Island Fever. I only found a couple of these Island Fever shirts that I had sold. We've got these. Super pumped about this. Vintage Bugle Boy wide leg jeans. Boom. Man, Bugle Boy's from when I was a kid. You see that, that tag there. Also the tag inside, Vintage Bugle Boy. Loving this. Uh, does have this little, that little mark on it, a little frayed spot. However, uh, this denim, because it's older denim, it has that different feel, right? It's got that like really heavy duty thick. Most denim nowadays has polyester built into it so that it stretches and so they use less cotton because cotton's more expensive to produce and to work with than uh, polyester. And so this has probably no polyester in it. If, if so, very little. Let's see. 100% cotton. Very excited about that. Most jeans nowadays are not made 100% cotton. And then here we have a U.S. Army. Basically the, the blouse or the jacket that goes to those pants that we saw earlier. Um, I've never sold the U.S. Army blouse before. However, I'm going to make sure I sell this one. Before we go on to shoes, the items that were in that blue Ikea bag, there were 15 total items that we paid $20.69 for. So we paid roughly $1.34 per item in that bag, which for me is really great because I can turn around and sell those even if I sold them at a lower cost of uh, $15 to $18 plus shipping, I can still hit my margins like well within my margins. Of course, I'm gonna go for the best price. I'm not going to undercut the market. I wanna get the best price for the things that I'm selling. And so uh, that is the situation with that. Now onto the shoes. For the shoes, they are $3.50 for adults and $2 for kids. There was one pair in there that were real tiny kids shoes. They charged me $2 for. First off were these 5.11 Tactical. These, uh, these boots, they are filthy and they have definitely been worn. However, I did a good check on them. They, they seem to be in pretty fair shape. Uh, I am going to clean them. I'm going to polish, not polish, I'm gonna wax the leather, uh, condition the suede. I'm gonna get these things, I'm gonna get these things in good shape. You can see the soles have decent tread on them. Definitely gonna make some money on those. Next, we have a pair of these soft, kind of clog slip on things. Um, once again, going to have to do some cleanup on these. Like with anything, anything you buy from Goodwill outlet, you're gonna have to do some cleanup on. These shoes I actually bought for a friend of mine. Um, their son is playing football this year and they actually sent a, they sent a um, message out on uh, the Facebook and they said, hey, we need size nine men's nine football cleats because our son is trying out or is, is playing football. And so I was going through the bins and lo and behold, size nine alpha, alpha pros. Yep. Nike alpha pros. I would not normally buy these to resell just because cleats seem to be a pretty low profit 
item unless you're getting like some super rare or hard to find shoes but generally like the alpha series are not that great for me uh, but nonetheless these will be kind of cool for him um if he wants them if he doesn't then i'll just give them to him and he can do what he wants with them you got these batman shoes probably these i don't know i wasn't really sure if i was going to buy these or not they're excellent condition we'll see i might throw them up i spent two dollars on them let's see if we can get them out of here for 10 bucks um, if not my three-year-old will definitely we have these keen sandals pretty nice converse Standard Converse, they need to be washed really bad. These, Merrells, got some size. What size are these? 14s, Nike, let's see, Nike, Free Run 2s. We have these, Nike, Max Limitless. Uh, pretty good, good soles on them. No, remember, we're looking like in these corners right here, in the back, on the inside. We're trying to make sure that they're not... Uh, not worn down or ripped. They've got the insoles, got the laces, everything's good. The fronts are tight. Got these Converse, sort of a different, I don't know, a different cut. This, they're like a mid top, <clears throat> a mid top Chuck Taylor. The the tongue is padded. I don't know. It feels like more of a skate shoe than, than traditional Converse are. Oh, and the laces are just elastic, elastic straps. That's pretty cool. A different type of shoe. I've not seen uh, these around. We got another pair of socks, uh, very similar to the other ones, but brown. So that is them. Got these Nikes right here. Girls Nikes, size 11C. Uh, my daughter is going into an 11, and I figured she might want to have a pair of these, pink and white, you know, how cute. So I will clean them up, see what she thinks. She might not like them. Pair of Vans, good condition, just dirty. They cost $350. New vans can be kind of pricey up there, you know, $45 to $55, but not every teenager or young adult has $45 to $50 to spend on it. So when we can supply that demand for those shoes, they can get a slightly used shoe at a lower price, you know, half the price. That's pretty awesome. Here's another pair of vans, just like the other one. Um, one thing that I look for when, when checking out vans and Converse, especially, is right here around this edge. Make sure that the rubber is not coming up apart, you know, because the rubber will come off of that um, that fabric. Guys, that's the shoes. Those are the all the shoes that we got today. I think it was 10 pairs or 12 pairs total. Hope you enjoyed this. I hope you uh, got value out of this video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a thumbs up. If you're not already subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. I am on 40 days of uploading. Today is day number three. And... 37 more days straight of uploading and then we're going to reevaluate and see how it's going if it's going good i'll just keep going and so far it's going really good uh thank you for all your feedback all your comments everything you guys have been reaching out to me through the youtube comment section and the instagram dms encouraging me and giving me your thoughts i really value your opinion and uh and what you have to say back to me i i love feedback i, I really appreciate that thanks again for watching hey remember keep selling get the bag I'll see you on the next video.